Yo, 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 yo. Ah, here we go. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Today is November the 22nd, 2022. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for another opportunity of prayer, oh God. We thank you, God, for just this season that, we, that we're entering in, oh God. I ask you, God, that you would bless those that are going through, oh God. First, I ask you, God, that you be with those that have lost loved ones, oh God. I ask you, God, that you just be with those that are going through at this particular time of year because of lost ones, lost ones that have been in love. I mean, loved ones that have been lost, oh Lord. And just generally around this holiday season, oh God, those that are suffering from depression, those that are going through in their mind, oh God, those that are going through physically, those that are in our military, oh God, that can't be with their families during this holiday season, oh God. It's actually God that you protect everyone and keep them all covered with your precious blood. I thank tonight's guests, oh God, as well as the viewers and their families, oh God, be with us all continuously. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know as you guys come in who's tuning in. I do apologize. Um, I didn't get to do a pre-show announcement today. I had a lot going on and um, literally just getting them set up. Got some nice guests in and there's a lot going on, but we're going to still make the show happen. I didn't want to cancel. I wanted to make sure we got this word out, especially during this particular time of year. We're gonna be getting into a little bit of a little bit about the um the importance of and the benefits of life insurance today, why we all need to have it, um the ways to go about getting it if we're interested. Um again, please let everyone know, uh your family members, friends, share it to your page if you want to. Um and also go to subscribe to the channel on YouTube where you can see previous shows. That's the Marvin Bennett Jr. show on YouTube. But please, let's get this. Let's get, let's get this started. Let's keep everyone lifted in prayer. Um, I want to start as usual with the Born Day shout outs. I want to say happy Born Day to Willie Douglas. Um, happy Born Day to LaShawn Anderson, my cousin Joe Daughtry, Tracy Cofield Early, Maurice Hawkins, Maisha Swan, Red Side Nation, Ralph Cohen, Stephen Goodwin. Uh, Quan Baker, Big Flay, and then my man, fresh, he fresh, stay Steve Hanford, my sister, Nita Chalmers, Latrice Ramos, Michael Baptiste, and last but not least, Leslie Hollenbeck. Um, happy born day to all you all. You all, um, condolences to, to this, uh, I can't, I can't pronounce the name, but Miss Robinson that lost her life. It's been all over the news. Um, and I did have an omission that I did want to mention, mention last week. I want to say uh, rest in peace to Lavelle Davis Jr. I want to say rest in peace to Devin Chandler. And rest in peace to, to Sean Perry, the three young Virginia players that lost their lives from a former player who killed them last week on campus. Um, living in a sick world. Well, we're seeing all these, these deaths and shootings at, at colleges, high schools, middle schools, just, we're living in crazy times, people. We're just living in crazy times. And, and it's, I'm so, I'm so, uh, have such mixed emotions when it comes to this gun topic. But I, I really wish we could just, uh, put this, the nonsense violence just, just put it to rest. Just put it to rest. Like a lot of this stuff is straight stupidity. Um, it makes no sense to me. I'm not sure what occurred in that situation. So I don't want to speculate, but I'm not going to really talk about that much tonight. But I do realize that there was three young men that lives that were lost and families affected by it. So, you know, my, my, my prayers are really with those families. Um, Miss Robinson as well. Um, went over to Mexico. Within 24 hours of being there, she's, she's dead, um, supposedly alcohol poison. Then the autopsy shows that there was neck and spine injuries as well, which mean that the people that she went over there with more than likely wasn't friends. Um, it, it's just crazy. I don't really know much about that story either, so I don't like to speak on things that I don't know. Uh, 
So I don't really get into all of that too. But what one thing that I did see um, is the mother speaking about it. And she I heard her saying how one of the young men that were that was supposed to be her best friend that was there was supposed to go on a trip. I came and sat at her house for the next four days until they found out exactly what happened. And then he up and disappeared. So let's let's really be careful who we surrounding ourselves around. Uh, even as much as I talk about love and, and, and spreading that love and being there for one another, let's make sure that we're being very aware of, of who we're letting into our space, around our children, around our families. Um, this stuff is important, y'all. This stuff is very, very important because once they're gone, they're gone. There's no coming back. None of us can pray anyone back. No one, none of us have ma mystical, magical powers to bring anyone back. So let's really be uh, aware of our surroundings and who it is, and and also let's be held accountable for our actions when we're we're we when we out here in these environments with with people and not in public. You know, there's nothing wrong with drinking if that's your thing, but let's make sure we got a level head. You know what I mean? If you if you're in the toting or doing whatever you do, let's be respectful of ourselves. Responsible. Yeah, exactly. Let's not put ourselves in harm's way when we're out here partying and we're having a good time and things of that nature there. You know, you wake up the next morning and just thank God that you're still here because you don't even know how you made it home. That's totally like like Steve said. That's totally irresponsible. Um, so let's 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 just do better. Let's do better for our communities. Let's do better for our families. Last of all, let's do better for ourselves. Um, and that's my little thing on that. Um, what's good, Miss Teresa B? Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and, and, and introduce a nice guest. Um, I got my man Steve Marshall. Um, this is it's, it's hard for me to. <laughs> uh, try to drum up something like I don't really know this dude. This dude is like family, um, literally. Uh, I forgot how long ago it was. Now, year, year, years ago, a few years back, um, all my life, all I wanted to do was get on the court with one dude, and I finally got that chance one day at a family reunion. <laughs> my cousin Jay, you ice, Mr. Ant. Uh, his his partner in crime on on the court back in the day, but Steve Marshall, he's a good family friend. Um, he's actually also a return guest. He's been on the show before, um, and we had a real good time chopping it up. It was very informative to me as myself. I thought we were coming up around these holiday seasons, he had reached out to me and said, you know, it was a little, it's been a little while now, but you know, we just had the anniversary of our show. You know, we do want to do it again. Absolutely, of course, man, because he. He's a good brother and he's doing good things and he's getting information out of here that got a lot of information out there we need to know about. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'm a big fan of having fun and making you guys laugh and all that did. But I'm all about education too. So tonight we're going to really get into the, the benefits and again, um, and why we should have life insurance. He's going to let us know about this here. So for those that don't know who you are, Steve, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Uh, my name is Stephen Marshall. I am the CEO of the Marshall Group of NCINC. Um, I have been an insurance agent since 2004, and I had a stroke in 2018 doing Hurricane Flow. And when you have an event that most people die from, it changes how you, you view things. So I always knew I wanted to do something positive and and big so six months after that stroke i started the marshall group and um uh, uh, the whole purpose of me doing that was insurance companies trained me to make them money and when you're trained for profit you only think about that profit and you're not thinking about the person so i wanted to make it more personalized and these people who believe in me are family. And when you call me or you need me, I pick up my phone. So I just want to do things in the way that I thought it should be done. You know, I know we all need to make money, but I want to sleep at night. And if I'm taking advantage of people, but making money, I'm not going to sleep well. So, you know, you ain't, 
you individually would not make me rich, but you can help. <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna help you, but I'm not trying to get rich off every person that I talk to. Uh, well, any person that I talk to for that matter, but uh, our community is is under service. And if you understood why it's under service, then you'd be upset. Life insurance is the difference between rich people and poor people. When you got life insurance, you benefit from death. When you don't, it puts the people who are left behind in a hole. Now, so, let me ask you that, like, cause you, you, I'm quite sure you're more aware of it than me, and I didn't do a lot of research for this stuff. So I said I'm gonna just let you take the wing and, and, and do what you do. But um, when you when you talk about the African American community, what are those numbers like, as far as as far as you know, like? How many of us, of us not have health insurance, but have actual life insurance? I don't know an actual number, but I will explain it like this. I was with a country, a company called Northwestern Mutual. They have an annual meeting in Milwaukee. There are 15,000 agents across the country. 700 of those agents were women. 300 of those people, of the 15,000, were black men and women. 300 out of 15,000? Yes, sir. Okay. For the whole country. So you do the math. Yeah. And my mentality was, who talking to us? You know? Like... Who's talking to us? And I'm 51, so I remember the white dude coming to my grandma's house and smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee and collecting the insurance premium from my grandmother and all my aunts. I can see his face right now. So we are not immune or uh, unaware. It's just something has happened from Nana and Big Mama to us. And I don't know what that is. I got an idea, but I, you know, that's just just me talking to thousands of people over this past twenty years, and um, it's almost like we don't care about lineage and um, what's going to happen when we die. The most common excuse when I'm talking to a brother or a sister is, "I ain't finna leave them." No money, so they can be good. Nobody left me nothing. And that, it's I mean, really that is extremely sad. Extremely sad. So, I mean, and I'm not like, I'm not new to this at all. So, I and I do employee benefits. So, I talk to large numbers of people every year. So you're talking five, six, hundred, eight hundred, a thousand yearly. So I have enough data, you know, even if you got a job that offers benefits, most of us don't even sit down and find out about the benefits. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that's just, and like you said, that, that go across the board. I just finished my open enrollment. <laughs> It's funny because like, what did you do? Huh? And what did you do? Harry ever just made some selections so I can keep on moving just like that did. I keep real with you, man. <laughs> I, like, oh. I got to do better. <laughs> you playing yourself. I got to do better. <laughs> you got Because look, we ain't 20. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. The end game is death. We're all going to die. If we all know this, Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, are we doing, what are we doing to prepare for it? Gucci belts, rims on our car, uh, going to the club, uh, getting our hair did, got our nails done. We got nails and all this other stuff, but we ain't got no insurance. And then quick to put up a GoFundMe for the, for the services. <laughs> I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. And I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. I'm not trying to be mean. 
If you put a GoFundMe on Facebook, the first thing I'm going to do is look at your fellas. And if you balling out of control and living your best life, I'm not donating nothing. Because I'm not doing those things, but I got insurance. I haven't been on the cruise. I ain't got no Yeezys. I don't buy Jordans. You know, our priority is... You don't buy those Jordans? What? I just knew you was a joint man. You know me. I won't even buy. I won't buy a joint penny if I could. I don't do Look, nothing. I don't do nothing, Mike. I have purchased joints. Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong. I yeah, was a discount. I was giving discount. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm 51, and now I like nice stuff. Mm -hmm. I like Air Maxes. It's 150, but I got insurance. So my priorities are in order, so I should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to spend my light bill money to go to the club. Now I'm a grown man. I don't do dumb shit. Sorry. You mm -hmm. know, but I don't do dumb stuff anymore. That's going to put me or my family in a bind. You know, some of us haven't learned any lessons that we still think is cute to be 50 and 60 with no insurance. And then you got to beg somebody to take care of you, beg somebody to bear. I mean, look. So if you put a GoFundMe and you come across my page, I'm checking you out first. Now, if your son dies unexpectedly, that's completely different. You know what I mean? Or uh, a car accident, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you, you know, if you're around here without no insurance, then that's your fault. Mm -hmm. now, now, know, let me ask you this. And like you say, I mean, I don't know much about it. I, all I can do is speculate like you. But I find it very interesting that we we have to, or we're supposed to, let's put it that way. <laughs> to all my Jersey people, uh, we have to have car insurance. Uh, nowadays, we have to have health insurance through your job or the government or whatever the case may be. Why is it that they don't specify life insurance in the same fashion? Why isn't life insurance, if it's if it's really to benefit us as a people, as individuals, and take care of our families, why isn't that is this something that's that's more prioritized from the government standpoint? Saying make sure, you know, is it is it is it really just that obvious that that we live in a capitalistic society? And all they care about is they bottom line? Yes. And <laughs> think about it like this. If car insurance was mandated, if life insurance was mandatory like car insurance, there would be no broke people. <laughs> yeah, true. Is everybody getting right. checks? Yeah. When the person dies, it's not a setback, it's a cover. Mm -hmm. Right? So the world runs on poor people not being educated, right? That's why in the poorest neighborhoods, the school systems are what? Fact. That's not by coincidence, right? Because it's not, I, yeah. It's not by coincidence, right? So just imagine Michael Brown. Trayvon Martin. I mean, I can go on and on. Just imagine if all of them had two to three million dollars worth of life insurance. We wouldn't have to march in the streets. The life insurance companies would be like, what are y'all doing? They're going to call their home people who work for the government. Y'all got to do something. Y'all costing us money. Just think of every dude that got killed in Chicago had life insurance. Just, 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 just think about that. It would cost the insurance companies so much money that they would do our bidding for us. You, you have to remember, in the 1700s when insurance was invented, we couldn't go in there and purchase a policy. So it was designed with us not in mind. And, and that, that's documented when insurance first became a, a, a life insurance. 1700. Even, even 1700. 
But we weren't free then. No, 1700s. Yeah. We were slaves. Mm -hmm. We were property. So they got insurance on us. We couldn't walk in the door and set up an appointment. We couldn't walk in the door and set up an appointment and get a policy to cover us because we weren't people. Mm -hmm. So this whole industry was designed without us in mind. I know that. It doesn't mean that we can't take advantage of it. But it wasn't made for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've worked for several companies and they don't really want to talk to poor people. They think that's a waste of time. They don't have disposable income and they don't, they don't have the mentality to understand why this is important. You know, and I'm not the smartest dude in the world. I was in Foot Locker. My boy was like, hey, man, you going to sign up for this 401k? What? No. They take the money out of my check? No. So I was there six years. I didn't get a 401k until after two years. So I missed out on two years, and they was matching because of lack of knowledge. You know, so... They say if you want to do if you want to hide something from the brothers and sisters, you're supposed to put it in the book. Knowledge is power. And if you understand what's going on, you can change everything. That generational curse is because we ain't doing what we're supposed to do. We worried about what Jay-Z wore and what Beyonce doing, but we don't know. We won't even see it. And the benefit me. So, you know, when you make that change and you realize that it's you that has caused all your problems, then you start to look at things differently. I, Stephen Marshall has caused Stephen Marshall more problems than any white man, any black man, any woman. It was me. And until I realized that things did not change. Mm -hmm. So let me ask so, you this for those that don't really understand, because people are like, yeah, I got insurance. You know, my job, they take money out of my check every year. Explain for for some people that might not understand. I don't want to say, I don't want you to, I don't want to use the term like dumb it down for, for us novice people, but explain it at the very basic level that how health insurance has nothing at all to do with life insurance. No. When people hear the term insurance, they automatically default to health insurance. Yeah. I was talking to this young lady uh, two weeks ago, and she said she wanted to get an additional policy on her mom. Additional means her mom already has a policy. She said, I think, I said, I don't deal in, I think, I need to know. Can you call your mother? Get on the phone. Yeah, I got insurance. Talking and about said, Exactly. And then I said, I'm talking about life insurance. She was like, yeah, I got that. And I was like, do you pay additional for it? And she said, no. And then once we found out, it's health insurance. All right. <laughs> car insurance takes care of your car and the person you hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Health insurance pays the doctor who fixes your sickness or your injury. True. Life insurance pays the person who's the beneficiary of the policy. Got Okay. Now there are many different types of life insurance, but um, the most important policies, in my opinion, are the ones that cover your paycheck. Uh -huh. That's called disability insurance. And you get that through your employer normally. And then you got hospital confinement, with pay which pays you because you're in the hospital. You got cancer policies that pay you if you get cancer. You got um, critical illness policies that pay you if 
you have a heart attack or a stroke like I did. And uh, so <laughs> there's a company called Lowers of London. They insure body parts. So if you're a surgeon, the surgeon insures his hands because that's his, his money maker. His money, yeah. <laughs> David Beckham insures his feet. Mm -hmm. If you ever wonder how a pro athlete who doesn't make it, like he might go to the league for a year and then he breaks his leg and he can't play anymore, how's he still living? He had a policy through Lords of London, which paid him two, three, four million dollars because he got injured and his livelihood has been affected. Okay. So, you know. Yeah, that's like I, I remember. I remember back when I was still in high school. I remember reading the, the Jet. That's, I'm dating myself. But I remember reading the episode, uh, 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 edition of Jet magazine, and this is in the '90s or so. And it was talking about how uh, the great vivacious, but Tina Turner, she had a hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance on her legs, <laughs> and I thought it was like I didn't even. I not health insurance, but insurance itself just on her legs forget her as a person she had a hundred thousand dollars on her legs and i'm like <laughs> that's crazy how is that even possible I mean, J-Lo's butt is insured i wouldn't be surprised the real part and her, her, her voice and her legs because she's an entertainer like Just imagine every time somebody in your family passed away, the life insurance policy goes back into the family trust. How do you go broke? True. You don't. You don't. So there was a 400 year head start in insurance. So if you look at all the people who got money, like families, that money came from insurance. Because every time somebody died, it replenishes the trust. If you don't know what a trust is, YouTube. You know, because that's a whole different topic. But uh, we just have to do better, man. We are all going to die. And if you are young, the insurance is cheap. If you are old, the insurance is expensive. Whose fault is it if your insurance is expensive? Yours. Right? Now, some of us don't have access to certain things, but a closed mouth does not get fed. We yeah, had all these friends that are take us to the club and go burn some ales with us, but they won't put us up on game. So I'm not that dude. I ain't going to the club with you, but I put you up on some game. Now, now, how does how does going about getting life insurance? How does that work? Like, can you just, uh, you know, like for health insurance, so to speak, you know, they, they have to be your your dependent or in your household things of that nature. There for you, they, they to be covered under your insurance. How does that work with life insurance? Can you just go get? Can I just go get life insurance on? This homeless dude, can I just get life insurance on my my niece, my nephew, my you, you know have I mean? to have you have to have insurable interest. Right? Now take that down because I'm not sure what that means. What what does that mean? Insurable, All right. interest? insurable interest is a reason. If me and you are in business, right? Mm -hmm. And we own 50% of the company that we started. It's called a buy-sell agreement. I would get a life insurance policy on you for 50% of the business and vice versa. So if one of us dies, then that money goes to buy out your half of the company. Okay. The premise works the same. If you have a family, now there are some stipulations. Um, I can be the payer of my sister's policy, but I can't be the owner, but I can be the beneficiary. Hold up, say that, say that again. All right. When you sign an insurance policy, there are there are a few titles. The owner can be me, the payer can be me, and the insurer can be me. 
Now, my wife can get a policy on me and she can be the payer and the owner, but I'm the insured. Now, break that down a little bit for me, the, the difference between a payer and an owner. Okay, the owner of the policy can make changes, make adjustments. The payer is the person that's paying for the policy. Okay, so you could get a policy on your mother, right? And you'll be the payer, she'll be the insured, and you can be the owner or she can be the owner. Right? So it's just the their titles, right? The owner can make policy changes. That's what makes the owner special. The payer is just paying the money. The insured is the person named on the insurance policy. So with my insurance, I'm the payer, the owner, and the insured. But the beneficiary is my wife. Okay, so the beneficiary is the person who's going to get the money. The payer is the person who's paying for the policy. The insured is the named person on the policy. And the owner is the person who can make policy changes. So, uh, so as far as being the owner, again, like, how do you go about that? Can I just, can I go get, can I own a policy on my mom and she not know about it? Well, no, because they have to sign for it. Okay. So you can't, like, we always want to circumvent the system. And that's because of slavery, and we had to do things in the dark. So I think bad habits carry over, and we always want to take something and circumvent it, right? So that's not always good. You know, I go out, and now, you have to have an insurable interest, right? That's the first part. So you can't just really go up to a person, and I know this has been done before, get their information and get a policy on them without them knowing about it. Now, Walmart used to have million dollar policies on their greeters. Walmart was the owner and the payer, but the greeter was the insurer. Walmart has an insurable interest with the employee because they're employees. So technically, you can work for me. I can get a life policy on you because you're an employee of mine. And I have an insurable interest. interest. Now, your family doesn't get any of the money because they're not a payer, they're not an owner, and they're not a beneficiary. So, so is, so, is that one of the loopholes or the downfalls of getting life insurance through your job when you when you have that ability? Like, does that no, one because, have to go back to your, your employer? No, 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 no. Normally, when you get a policy through your company, you're paying extra for it, so you own the policy. You're the owner. Okay. I'm saying that on the back end, business that I have the right to get insurance on any employee that I employ because I have an insurable interest. That person dies, it's going to take me a certain amount of money and this and that and that to replace that person. Now, so, do companies have to disclose that information to you that they have a life insurance policy on you? I, th that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I don't do that. So I know it, it's feasible mm -hmm. and I know it can be done, but I don't know the law per se verbatim on do they have to disclose that to you? Yeah, I would definitely, yes. I would definitely hope so. But uh, now I saw this thing on 20, 20 years ago and the family was complaining because Walmart got this money from the person that they love dying and they didn't get any money. So I'm not sure how that process worked out in the beginning, but you know, it was on 2020 years ago. And I know just from 
insurance classes that insurable interest allows you to do the, those type of things. So, you know, I don't want to scare people away that you work for a person and, you know, all these things are going to happen. What I'm more concerned with is we're not even getting the information so we can make the best decision. Now, there are people who don't want to ask questions because they don't want to appear stupid. So that tells me you would rather be stupid than not look stupid. <laughs> yeah. And it's not calling anybody stupid. It just is what it is. Because if you... But I'm if, saying, if yeah, you're yeah. afraid to look yeah. stupid, yeah, 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 you would rather... By definition, yeah. And be stupid. Right. Yeah. By default. Right, right, right. So, please... I'm just a straightforward dude, and if I don't create thought, then you're not going to move. You're not going to do what's best for you, and, and you might, this might be the one chance you get before something happens to put these things in place. So I only got a certain amount of time with you, so I'm not going to pull any punches. You got more holes in your plan than Swiss cheese, and I need to let you know that. Your slip is showing. Now you said you said something you said something earlier too though about how uh the younger you are the, the cheaper it is the older you are the more expensive it is that that definitely makes sense I definitely understand that logic behind that but uh I'm trying to think of how to say it, uh accent rather can you can you, let's say a couple can you get life insurance on your unborn child? Uh, do you have to wait till they're six months old before you can get a life insurance policy on a child, things of that nature? It's normally 15 days. 15 days after birth? Yes. Okay. Yes. And here is the caveat with that. Um, whole life and index universal life, right? They, those policies uh, create equity, like ownership of a house. Right. So just imagine you got a whole life or IUL on your son who's 15 months old. You put $100 a month in that policy instead of buying them Jordans and Gucci belts that they're going to outgrow in a month, Right. So you put $100 a month away consistently. When your child's 15, they got 18 grand, 20 grand. By the time they're 21, they got 40, 50 grand. What can't they do? Now you're your own bank. You can borrow money from your policy now. Beat this. Final expense is for your burial. What if I told you life insurance is meant to be meant while you were alive? Yeah. Think about it. Hey, I got a question for you. Can, can you see the questions on, on the live feed? I cannot. Okay. Oh, uh, no. What's good to see? Thanks for tuning in as well. The question is, do I need life insurance in addition to life insurance that I get through my job? My job provides accidental and group universal. Okay, <clears throat> great question. Somebody said in the benefit meeting, if you are paying for the policy and it's extra, normally it's portable. Portable means when you leave, you can take it with you, okay? If your life insurance is attached to your salary, you can get 10 times or five times that you have to die employing by this company. Once you don't receive a salary, there is nothing to multiply it by. Gotcha. Make sense? So yeah, so even oh. if you get terminated, you just don't have life insurance no more as opposed to if you already had your own individual insurance. Now, you can get the policy through the company and then when you leave, don't wait for them to contact you. You need to contact them and switch it from payroll to bank draft. And then your policy is uh, should be 
should continue. And normally it does not, uh, the price doesn't change, but uh, group plans change every five or 10 years. Okay. So the for my military people, the VGLI is a group, group policy. So if you get out the service and you get the VGLI, it's gonna be dirt cheap at the beginning. And then as you get older, it's gonna increase. So the best policy to have if you're gonna get termed is a level term policy. The price is the same for the 10 year, 20 year, 30 year duration of the policy. Now, once it's time to renew, if you renew at the end of 30 years, now you're 30 years older and the price is gonna reflect that age. So this is not something you get and put in a drawer and forget about it. This is something that needs to be looked at continuously because your life changes every six months. You get married, had a kid, this happened, that happens. So if you meet with your person, and that means you need an insurance person, I'm an insurance professional. If you just buy off price, then you're going to get what you pay for and you're going to shortchange yourself. All right. You know, now, but if we go to the bar uh, and they give us the option, you want the top shelf or you want some aristocrat, we're going to get the top shelf, right? <laughs> so priorities, priorities. That's all Don't I'm saying. All the aristocrat drinkers out there. <laughs> I won't touch it, though. <laughs> I was one. I was one. But, but the Steve that it made me, y'all don't want to see. <laughs> So that aristocrat. But nobody want to see that version of people on the aristocrat. Whoa, whoa. Like I tell people all the time, I said, listen, if you could get if you could get a gallon for five ninety nine or nine ninety nine, hey, that might not be the move, bro. <laughs> you gonna end up in the back of a paddy wagon. <laughs> and I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, uh, so, so let's say, you know, people, I don't really do it myself personally, but at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, people like to do resolutions and things of that nature there. Uh, it, with, what, what would be for somebody out there, if you're, if you're doing a pitch or not even, I don't even want to say sell, which it is selling, but it's selling with a purpose, so to speak. What what will be your, your what will be your message to someone coming up into the, these holiday seasons and, and coming and getting ready to prepare for a new year if God so allows us to see it? Um, I, I this sounds like something that I might be interested in. Uh, what will be what would be a starting place to begin this process? Well, for me, I would like to have a conversation to see where you're at because. I need to meet you where you're at and help you get up to speed versus trying to sell you whole life, whole life, whole life, whole life. Now I do make more money on whole life. I'm just gonna be straight up. But if you don't have any insurance, it's stupid to me trying to sell you a $200 whole life policy when you ain't have no insurance. You know? Um, this is what I would do. If you die tomorrow, <laughs> what state would your family be in? That's where you start. You have to uh, you have to handle the main objective is can you cover your funeral? So that's where I start with people. Do you have any issues? If it's no, then I'm. it's a different conversation. Now, we're going to have other conversations, but the first one is don't leave nobody in a hole when you get put in one. Now, there are other factors. If you're married, and if you're on the podcast now, I would take my husband or my spouse's salary that they make 
and multiply it by the number of years, work years, that they have left. And this is with no pay increase. And look at that number, and you will realize that you are way underinsured. If you make $30,000 a year and you got another 35 years of work life and your husband dies, you're missing out on a million dollars. So if he died tomorrow, that million is gone. And that's a million with no pay increase. So what are the odds you make $30,000 for the next 35 years? So at the bare minimum, Everybody that I know that you know is underinsured. Everybody. Yes, yeah, especially people, when you break it down like that. Um, well, uh, and, and, and definitely, 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 let me ask you this: Like, can, are you? Um, can you do life insurance? Uh, do anybody? What I mean is, like, can you? You personally, can you? Give life insurance to somebody in Colorado or, yeah. How does that work I have to be I in that state? I have to be licensed in the state that they live in. Okay. Now, the workaround is where I wrote the policy. So if I'm not licensed in South Carolina, which years ago I was not, I would drive down to the border they would cross over into North Carolina. We would write the policy and they would go back home and I would go back home. Okay. So, but I'm licensed in 19 states. You said so, you are licensed in 19 all, states? I am, yeah. Okay. I am. All right. And the reason I'm asking that is because we have viewers from different states sometime and, and they might want to reach out or, or contact you. But it definitely, before we did wrap up, I definitely want to um, make sure you get your information out there. So people, if they want to have these conversations or that they can actually reach out to you and things of that nature, then you ain't got to do no referrals or whatever the case may be. Just let them know, listen, hey, I seen you on this on the Marvin Bennett Jr. show, and I like what you were talking about. I got some questions. I don't want to be – I don't want to look stupid anymore. <laughs> well, I don't want to be stupid. No, I don't want to be stupid yeah. anymore. Yeah, I know what I said. I changed it. I don't want to be stupid anymore, and I want to find out and get some information and then make my decision based off that information. But – Definitely, I would encourage everyone definitely to reach out to them. Uh, um, like you said, just to have that general conversation to find out how does it benefit you. Because let's let's be let's be honest. It's just like whether we're whether we're talking about uh, religion, whether we're talking about employment. Some people, some people going to buy in. Some people just not. You know what I mean? Everything isn't for everyone. But I don't see the harm. And at least having a conversation. I thought, and like I said, I think your starting point is a very interesting one. If you were to die today, what position would uh would that put your family, leave your family in? And I think that's something that we all need to really be mindful of. Like I said, especially in this day and time that we're living in, where we're starting to see all these different deaths. Uh, the young man a couple months ago that 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 shot the five people, including his brother. Then Raleigh, um, all the stuff that's going on the other day. What was it? 16 people killed at an LGBTQ uh, club in Colorado. Uh, I, I was reading a couple of weeks ago, a hundred car pileup in Colorado. Like you might want to stay away from Colorado right about now. But uh, there's a lot of stuff Listen, going on. You said something. Everything is not, not for everybody. And here's where why that statement is wrong. Everybody on this podcast and everybody in the world is going to get sick, going to get hurt, and they're going to die. True. So there is nobody on this planet who That's doesn't get my yeah. terms. Because can you guarantee me that you're not going to get sick? Okay. Can you guarantee me that you're not going to get hurt? We got another question. It says, "Are are are there life insurance po are there insurance policies that cover death because of a pandemic? I need the fine print of a policy, and I noticed that the death I noticed that the deaths because of COVID pandemic were not covered. That's not true. 
I don't think that's true because a lot of people have died from COVID and I know the insurance policies have paid out. They couldn't have changed the policy that quick. Now, it may have been something else. Now, if you lie on the insurance policy, you're not going to get paid. If you say you don't smoke and you die from lung cancer from smoking, because they're going to do their due diligence. So most of the time when a policy doesn't pay out, it's because the person lied about something. And if you lie about it, it's a misrepresentation and the policy is null and void. Okay. I think I read that one. The, the question is, are there life are there insurance policies that cover deaths because of a pandemic? Yeah. And the thing is, you have the insurance before the pandemic start and you die, they can't not pay you as long as you've been paying. It, it, you know, so um I mean insurance has been around through all the pandemics. You know, so I haven't heard of an insurance company uh not paying out because a person died from COVID. You know what I mean? Now, uh Am I willing to state my life that that hasn't happened? No. <laughs> but to my knowledge, and I think dealing with all the companies that I deal with, if some backlash from that would have happened, then I would have heard about it. So now I know that a disability policy which covers accident and sickness was covering COVID. You know, so if COVID puts you in the hospital and you can't work, and your disability policy is going to cover that. The life insurance policy is based on your death. So now there are stipulations, right, as far as like suicide. If you commit suicide in the first two years of the policy, it's not going to pay out. If you go 24 months in one day and you blow your brains out, that policy will pay out. Say that again? It doesn't. Uh, life insurance yeah. policy won't pay out your beneficiaries if it's suicide in the first two years of the policy okay so if you in other words you policy, can't, can't just go get a life insurance policy and then kill yourself and everybody benefit from it right gotcha right gotcha. now two years and a day after it's gonna pay yeah well, I, I will pray that you would have a change of heart if that was your, if that was your game plan. <laughs> I have sure a client. I have a client, and she's passed away now. But her father was on dialysis, so she called me and said, "What's the suicide clause on a life policy?" Very odd question. I said, "I'm going to answer it, but you're not going to just stop there. You're going to have to give, you know." So our father was on dialysis. He had a life insurance policy that he had had for years and he was tired of doing dialysis. So if he stops doing dialysis, he's gonna die. So he didn't want to leave his wife in a bad spot. So she called me. Once I told her what I told her, two weeks later, he was dead. Wow. So you never know what a person is really going, going through. through, you know what I mean? So. Uh, but I had the unpleasant conversation with a friend about her dad and the policy still paid out. What's good, Sharon? That Sharon that tune in, Jennifer Tucker. What's good, Jen? I definitely want you guys to link up because uh, Sharon that does the same thing as well. She, I think, I'm not sure the name of her, her company, but she always talks about having an exit plan, so to speak. So I, I would really love just for you guys to have a conversation and I just be, I just listen in on you guys' conversation as you talk your talk, you know what I mean? But okay. um, I want you to backtrack on something that you said too. Uh, What was it? You said something in that last part that I said I wanted to go back to. Uh, What was it? What was it? Um, not to say Oh, about getting insurance on your family? Mm hmm Okay, so normally you can add a rider to your policy that will cover your spouse and your kids. Now, 
sometimes if it's done through your employer, the uh if you get a hundred thousand, then your spouse can get fifty. And then your kids can get ten thousand. So there is a way to get one policy to cover the whole family. It just depends on your situation. Okay. No, nah, and that's what it was. Thank you for bringing it back to my memory, Lord. Uh, you mentioned about lying. So under no circumstance, when we go in the doctor's office, you know, people don't want to, be, like you said, you don't want to look stupid and all that there. So you lie to the doctor, not realizing that giving them all the information is is pivotal. Um, so when it comes to like smoking, drinking, whatever the case may be, it's very important not to lie. Let's talk about that a little bit when you when you're talking about life insurance. Any false statement on a any insurance policy is grounds for termination. Okay. So if you smoke, you better say that you smoke. If you drink, you better say you drink. Well, I mean, drinking ain't that bad unless you've been advised by a medical professional to seek help. <laughs> So you know that. You know saying, like when you talk about that, do you need to? Do you do you? Is there a difference between divulging information like, uh, well, I I might have a shot once a month versus I drink a pint a day? <laughs> you only answer the question that they ask. Okay. Now some people would talk themselves out of a policy. Because they didn't ask the question, and then they talking, and then you know, as an agent, you have to. Well, she did say X, Y, Z, yada yada yada. So you know, only answer the questions that are asked. Okay. Speaking of one, like, I got one for you. Uh, it says I've heard I've heard of insurance policies that sound like you're investing in the stock market. If I understand those policies. They cap your losses and benefits. For those policies, do beneficiaries receive only the face value of the policy? Can they also receive your investment in the stock market? Now, that's a really good question. And the policy that she's talking about is called an IUL. It's an index universal life policy. And Waka Flocka has made a video about that type policy. Um, the death benefit is the main source. I would use the money while I was alive and try to pay it back because basically you're your own bank, right? And that money in the policy, that's not your money. The insurance company loans you the money that you take out of there and uses your policy as collateral. So your money is still growing. So, um, to my knowledge, the death benefit is what they get, but you can annuitize the policy and it's paying you out that accumulation fund. So there's a way for you to get it, but I don't think they get both. They get the face amount of the policy minus any loans that you might have took out. But now- okay, and but not both the policy and the stock market value. Mm -hmm. and, and with an index annuity, it's a reflection of the stock market, right? So the stock market might be at 12, but you're capped at 10. Now, the best part about that is when the stock market goes below zero, you don't lose any money. You just, just don't make any money. All right, so... You keep your gains from the prior years, right? And you don't go below, so you don't go negative. And that's the draw to that. The other draw is the more time you have, the less money you have to put in it. So if you do one on your child at 15 months, you know, and like for me at 50, if I want to have X amount of dollars, I would have to put X amount of dollars in and that's not going to be a small premium. That's going to be a large premium because I don't have much time left. I'm 51. 
So I'm hoping to be a hundred, but one of the odds, you know? So um, that's a good question though. Real good question. But the conversation that I want to have with the people, they can also do research on their own and come with questions. Cause that makes the teaching process easier. I don't sell anybody anything. I deal with facts and I educate. So if you know that you're 50 and you ain't got no life insurance and you'll wait, you're gonna wait for what? Because right. it's gonna be more expensive next year. She asked, uh, would you recommend to this is the she again, would you recommend investing in an IUL or just opening a brokerage account and investing in the stock market directly? Oh, now I am not a financial planner or a financial advisor, right? So I just want to preface that. You should have a, your portfolio should be diverse. Okay. And I would never tell anybody to don't do this and do that. So I would have my stuff in the stock market. I would have a uh, whole life insurance policy or IUL, I would have Roth RRA because these are just buckets of money when you really break it down. How many stash spots are you going to have when you get old? Right? You say like the old people so you got to put all your eggs in one basket, yeah. Right. So I, you know, I'm not going to say if you do life insurance and you get this type of policy that you don't have to do anything else. I want options. So a 401k is an option. Somebody's going to be matching that. That's free money. I'm going to take advantage of that. A Roth IRA, that's another option. A whole life or IUL, another option. Mutual funds, another option. <laughs> so banks and savvy investors don't put all their money in one place. Yeah, that don't make sense. Yeah. Right. Right. Because all your money is under the mattress and the house burned down. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Now your house goes, all your clothes, and your money. Yeah. And you 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 heartbroken. That's what I call heartbroken. <laughs> so you broke broken. Yeah, you broke. <laughs> You ain't got nothing to scrape together. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> well, before we get out of here, man, what, what would you, what, what, what's something that you feel like you really want to share with the people? And definitely let them know how to get in contact with you to, to start this convers this individual conversation for those that's interested. All right. First of all, I have a very unique process. I have a link that you can uh, fill out. It's going to get a little information and let me know a little about you. It's going to, once you fill the link out, it's going to send you an email and you can schedule an appointment and it's a 15 minute discovery call just so we can get to know each other, know what the purpose of these things are, where you at, and things of that nature. I have been chasing people to talk to them for 20 years and I'm pretty tired. So this is going to allow the serious people to get in my CRM, which is my client management system, and set up an appointment at their leisure so we can start this process. Uh, if I can leave people with one or two nuggets, <laughs> three things. You're going to get sick, you're going to get hurt, and you are going to die. So it is up to you to make sure that you have the information. Even if you talk to me, do not take my word for it. Do research. We have a phone that is a computer where you can get any answer that you want. But we're too busy watching TikTok videos and worried about who going to be in the next versus? Well, the only versus you should be worried about is you versus them. And it's inevitable. So if you're not from Wakanda, 
you're not a demigod, you're not a immoral being, then you're gonna die. And insurance is going to number one, keep your family from moving. Number two, it's gonna keep you in your house, it's gonna keep you in your car, and it's gonna pay the person who's gonna fix your body. So we can run around here all day. If you can't, if you tell me you can't afford insurance, I'm gonna tell you you can't afford not to have it. Because if you're struggling and you're working full time, imagine the struggle if you can't work and you're in the hospital. Where's the money gonna come from? I believe in other people's money. And insurance is somebody else's money. I can't, I got hurt, I got sick, or I died. Somebody else comes and saves a day. Who don't want that? Definitely, let's think about our kids. Let's, let, let's think about that. You know, them, them kids for those for the parents that's out there, even the ones that that uh, even even the opposite, the children out there, those ones that their their family, your your parents are relying on you and your income. You know, you're helping take care of mom, you're helping take care of dad, things of that nature. Let's not put nobody in a worse position on top of already dealing with the loss of you. Listen. I had an uncomfortable conversation with my dad before he died, eight months. I found out what he wanted and we hashed out everything. The last two weeks of his life, he could not talk. Hmm. How are we gonna play in or talk or if he can't talk, he wasn't even conscious. You know what I mean? Life is serious and the last lesson we're gonna teach our kids how to die with dignity. And I know several kids who hate their parents because their parents died and left them in a spot. And here's one kid. Your parents are going to call you and let you know that they screwing up. So this Thanksgiving, don't think you know that your mom and dad have insurance. You need to know for sure. So in between the cooking and the games and the fighting and the drinking, ask those questions. Yeah. Because when they die, it's called a scavenger hunt. And I hate for you to be hunting for something that you can't that is not there. So we must do a better job of prioritizing the importance of you tell me you love me, and this is out to all the men out there. You love your wife, but you won't even go take a physical and get an exam so you can get insurance. So if you died, which we tend to die first. She's gone. <laughs> because they say I'm not going to leave her all good with the next man. Uh -huh. Do yeah, he really love you? Do he really love you if he won't go take an exam? <laughs> I'm yeah, just saying. you know, I, I really want to reiterate that and, and get encourage people to like, don't postpone, don't procrastinate. This is not something that we should procrastinate with. Let's have these real, let's call a family meeting or whatever the case may be and have these real conversations because us not having a conversation like to Steve's point, you know, us not having that conversation isn't going to change the fact that, like you say, death is inevitable. Um, you know, there's no getting around that no matter how you look at it. So let's have those real conversations whether whether we want to have them, whether they're difficult to have. We could cry together. We could try to laugh together. But this, we, we need to have these conversations. We need to know what's what and, and what to expect. One last thing. Mm -hmm. Black and white people don't even die the same. Right? When Big Mama is wheeled down the aisle, don't they fall out? The whole family, right? You've been to a black funeral. When they wheel that casket down the aisle, what's the reaction? Oh, God. Take me with you. All that. I'd have been to several white funerals. I'll never see that. Deals <laughs> or wheels? What are we leaving behind? When me and Ma die, they've been waiting on her to die. Because they know she got assets, she got life insurance. It sucks that she's gone, but they about to come up. We crying because 
I walked, it wasn't nothing wrong with that. We're gonna pay my bills. This, that, I mean, like it, it's so sad. But when Big Mama get pushed down that aisle, next funeral you go to, and you will be going to one because somebody just died. Absolutely. And I think that, I think that's a good place to close it out right there. Are you gonna ask yourself that? Are you gonna leave yourself bills or wills? Which one are you gonna do? What are you leaving to your family? Bills or wills? I'm trying to leave a will. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. Oh, What's up, Mama Joyce, she said um, some good information has been shared here tonight. Thank you, Stephen Marshall. You can inbox me on Facebook, and uh, I don't charge people just to have a conversation. I like to get to know people. So if you got questions, call me, Facebook me. We'll have a conversation in there. When you're ready, you can get my link. And we can do that. I'm never going to force you to do something that I haven't already done. And I'm not going to force you to do anything. I'm not going to chase you. And I'm not going to force you. This is just like church. When you get saved, it's by free will, right? Jesus can make us believe in him, but he gives us a choice. Absolutely. You have a choice here. But the knowledge is where it starts. If you don't know, I didn't know if you get a tax return that you was broke until I was 47. I thought it was a come up because I'm getting money back. But technically, if you're getting money back from the government, it means you're broke. And I had no idea. And I went to college. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, you don't know what you don't know, dog. Hey, what's good, sis Jen? How about them Giants? We ain't going to talk about them, them other teams in the NFC. Well, oh, you a Giants fan. Y'all lost. We won. And then we're going to put that thing on y'all. Yeah. We're going to see each other come Thanksgiving. We're going to see each other. We banged up, but that ain't no excuse. We're going to come to Dallas. We own the building. Don't forget Don't forget who got the first victory there. Just check it out, baby. Don't, don't forget. It's going to be some sad souls on Thursday. Don't, don't but at least you don't have some good food to ease your pain, because we them boys. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll be calling Jeez. you about seven thirty-five. Well, how, how about how about them giants? How about them giants? <laughs> you didn't call me on Sunday. Nah, because I, I don't I don't I don't do the whole hate like I used to. I don't, I really can't do it. But y'all I'm going to go on record, go record cuz I am a I'm a true Giants fan. Don't get it twisted. But I do think y'all do think y'all going to beat us this. Y'all going to sweep us this year. I give y'all that. Every year. No, y'all don't. No, stop it. Stop it. Y'all are 10 and 2 against us. That means y'all won two games. 10 and 2. And how many how many years we have been playing each other? Y'all no, as funny as y'all going to catch those there as well. Like y'all tell us, let's deal with the present, right? So <laughs> The past 12 games, which is more than one season, yeah. all the 10 and 2. Stats. We 2 and 10 against y'all. 2 and exactly. I, I can live with that. Two. I can live with that. Y'all well, 2 and this? How about this? Come at, after we after y'all beat us on Thursday, what I do is I come up there to you and I'll make sure I got my VCR with you. That way we can watch the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Because that's the only way we're going to see the Cowboys in the Super Bowl is if you, <laughs> you watch Troy Aikman from back in the day. <laughs> uh, with that being said, man, real talk, bro. Thanks for really doing this, man. Um, and we're going to, like I said, I, I definitely want to try to get a schedule together where we can get you and Sharon that on here. And y'all can really just, like, help us and get this information out there. Because, like you said, knowledge is power. And I really want to see. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still in that too, bro. I hope you got that copyright. I really want to preach that message, though. Bills and wills. That's something that's very important to me. When in terms of how much I love my people, how much I love my community, and I really want to see us be able to come up. Not just not for the benefit of, oh my God, when she gonna die, so I can come up. Not now, nah, none of that did. But making sure that our business is taken care of, so we're not a burden even after we're gone. That's the most important thing. Um, so I think, again, bro, thanks for the, the um, information. 
Um, thanks for getting people the, uh, how to get in contact with you again. That's Stephen Marshall on uh, Facebook. Like you said, you could DM him at Stephen Marshall of the Marshall Group. Um, he could answer your questions that you might have and, and what steps you need to take to make sure that you're leaving bills. I mean, wills, not bills. Um, we so know what the bills part feels like. We already know that. We've had to help donate to people's funerals. You know what I'm saying? So if you would give a person money if they died and they couldn't afford to bury the person that died, you need to send them my number. So you don't have to do that. Gotcha. And if they talk to me and they don't get nothing, I wouldn't send them nothing. Yeah. True that. So let's help us help us help ourselves. Um, help me this. help you. Right, right, right. And right before I close, I definitely want to give a heartfelt condolences. I, I wasn't strong enough to do it in the beginning of the show, but I want to let um my my, my, little, my little bro, um we lost Anthony, not not Anthony Williams that you know, but no, um, don't, don't do that. One of my Jersey homeboys, um shout out to to Marcus, um who lost his his, his big bro, um Pastor Williams, Elder Williams, and the rest of the family, um. Anthony was a very, very to like I think Marsh, I think I read one of the comments. Marshetta said the best to know him was to love him. Um a good inspirational brother that we lost very, very young. Uh uh it's just, it's just heartbreaking. So my my um my prayers are with with the Williams family and all of the friends and the families and the loved ones, everybody that he gigged with, everybody that he shed it with. Um again in my Jersey fam, um was always a solid brother with me, even especially when I found out he was from Jersey. But he was always, always, um, always a good brother, always positive, man. So um, your loss will definitely be felt. Um, and hopefully that your legacy will continue. Um, Marcus, like Marcus said, his son is definitely going to know how much you meant to him as well as the rest of the family, man. So um, I love you all. Um, you know, holiday seasons are here for those that are celebrating Thanksgiving. Let's be safe. Um, and like I said, just when we're somewhere in there, in between the, the, the board games, the dance and the music, uh, and let's have these conversations and make sure that our affairs are in order. Um, again, run your family having, like a business. Yeah. You know, not having those conversations is not benefit anybody, anybody whatsoever. So let's, let's have those conversations this year. Um, stay safe. Um, and, and again, like I say, for those that we know in our circles that may have lost a spouse, that may have lost a lover, that may have lost a mom, a brother, sister during this season here, may have lost a relationship, whatever it may be, let's really keep keep them close during this time. And, and, and you know, so many times, and I don't want to keep going on, but so many times, we, you know, we see different things happen in our lives. And as individuals, we know that people love us but we don't necessarily want to see them to see us in the state that we're in. We got to get past Suffering that. Silence. Yeah, yeah. Suffering we got to get past that because isolation just gives the devil more room to work with. You know what I mean? You When you isolate and cut your own self off, not what people have cut you off, but you remove yourself because you don't want people to see how much weight you gain or how you don't lost your hair or whatever the case may be, that's not good, yo. Let's let's make sure that we, we we keep in contact with the ones that we love and allow ourselves to be loved in return. You know what I mean? Don't isolate yourself. Don't cut yourself off. Yeah, it might be a painful thing, but I, I promise you, I'm speaking from what I know. We would rather see you in that condition than not see you at all. You feel me? So let's going to be people to come see you that you don't even expect love you the way that they do. Mm -hmm. So when you suffer in silence, you rob yourself and you rob the person that you touch that you don't even know you touch. And he would drive six hours to come spend some time with you just to let you know that he appreciates you. And you don't let, you know, like we all go through stuff, but we can't be too proud, not, you know, just to die alone and by yourself. Don't, nobody should go through that. So speak up. You know what I mean? And for those of y'all who lost the person and it was this year, this is going to be a very hard year 
because you're going to have the first birthday, holiday, Christmas. I've been there. My dad died. It's been eight years. It does get easier, but it still sucks. So my prayers go out to you and your family and that empty chair at the table. I understand. I understand. So and lastly, let's everybody keep the, the great, the great Sinbad in our prayers. Um, I see where he's trying to recover after having a stroke where he has, he's re relearning how to have to walk. Um, this is a brother that gave many of us laughs for many, many years, a true pioneer, true gym. Like I said, legend in his own right, a great comedian. Let's keep him in his prayers and wish him well and, and be there for him. Like you said, as much as I know, as much as laughs as that he he's given me over my life. If there's anything that I could do to, to help um, him in his recovery process, I'm game for it. Um, so let let's all really just be mindful in this in this holiday season of of, of giving thanks uh, because I like to think that that's what we celebrating, not actually what the day represents and and uh, historically um, because it wasn't a happy occasion. It wasn't another give thanks. Uh, us still in these people land, but the way that we do view it, and we're all about giving thanks. Let's really be thankful and, and let let these people know, man. Let, let 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 someone know that you take for granted that they know how you feel about them. Let them know. Um, I, I appreciate each and every one of my friends and, and and ones the viewers that reach out to me from some behind the scenes just to let me know how proud they are of of me that they are. Um, you guys don't really know. How much that really, really keeps me motivated. It keeps me encouraged and it keeps me going on, even when I don't always necessarily want to. Um, those words really, really encourage me during those tough times. Um, so I really, really appreciate it. And I want to let you guys know that I don't, they, they're not falling on deaf ears. I do appreciate you all. I love you all. But with that, I'm going to let everybody go so you can enjoy that there. But again, enjoy this holiday season. Uh, we'll be back next, next Tuesday with my man, uh, Ray Butler. Mama Joyce, your baby boy, going to be with wrapping it up with us next Tuesday night. Um, so, again, everybody be safe. Um, um, just be safe and love each other while you can, man. Let's not take life for granted because no one, people always say no one's promised tomorrow. I say no one's promised this afternoon. Um, so let's be mindful of that and, and just continue to grow together. Um, with that being said, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, and as usual, in signing off, DeAndre and Lysha, know that daddy loves you intentionally, but I also love you unconditionally. Till next week, peace.